I recently read the book Made to Stick by authors Chip Heath and Dan Heath. Imagine this evening you meet a friend for dinner. Halfway through dinner, you tell your friend that you want to try an experiment. You tell them that you're going to spend 10 seconds tapping out a famous song on the table, and they have to guess what that song is. You start by tapping out the rhythm to the song, Happy Birthday. If you did that experiment with 10 friends, how many of those friends do you think would guess the song? One out of 10 friends or five out of 10 friends? In 1990, psychologist Elizabeth Newton played this game with students at Stanford University. Her findings were startling. Only one in 40 students could guess the famous song that the tapper was tapping. But here's the troubling thing. The people who were tapping out the songs thought that at least half the people would guess the song that they're tapping. Because the tappers knew the song and they had the song playing in their head, they expected many more people to understand what song they were trying to communicate. This is what psychologists call the curse of knowledge. Most of the time we communicate our ideas as if we are the audience and we forget that the audience doesn't share our knowledge. This makes our communication either confusing or boring. The curse of knowledge is the reason why brilliant scientists write papers that almost no one else can understand because hardly anyone else shares their same level of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is the reason you can give a colleague straightforward instructions, but those instructions seem confusing to that person. The curse of knowledge is the reason you can spend hours putting together a presentation that you find interesting, but everyone that you presented to seems bored and distracted. If you can't communicate your ideas effectively, you waste a huge amount of time and effort developing those ideas. Luckily, authors Dan Heath and Chip Heath have come up with a list of techniques to overcome the curse of knowledge and get our ideas to stick. Sticky ideas are interesting, actionable, and memorable. Here are three stories from the book to illustrate three ways in which you can make your ideas stickier. One afternoon, social psychologist Robert Cialdini went to the Arizona State University Library to look for a compelling way to teach scientific lessons to his students at Arizona State. He gathered a pile of scientific books to search for inspiration. As he flipped through the science books, he found that most of them were loaded with scientific jargon and painfully boring. But then he came across an astronomy book that started off with a question. How can we account for what is perhaps the most spectacular planetary feature in our solar system, the rings of Saturn? There's nothing else like them. What are the rings of Saturn made of anyway? And how could three internationally acclaimed groups of scientists, a group at Cambridge, MIT, and Caltech, come to wholly different conclusions on the answer? The answer unfolded slowly, like a great mystery novel. Cialdini had no interest in the rings of Saturn before he picked up this book, but now he found himself going through the pages of this astronomy book like a speed reader. The reason Cialdini couldn't put that science book down is the same reason we force ourselves to sit through a bad movie. We need to know how it's going to end. If you want to make your ideas stick, don't reveal your idea all at once. Create a sense of mystery. I tried to do this at the beginning of this video when I told you I had three stories to tell and I showed you three letters. My hope was that you would wonder what those letters stood for and what those stories were about. Authors Chip and Dan Heath say that the goal is to get your audience thinking, what's going to happen next? And how is this going to end? By getting your audience to ask those questions, you have a better chance of getting your audience engaged and having your ideas stick. Oh, and the answer to the Saturn mystery was dust. That's right, dust. The Saturn rings are made of ice covered dust. The 2001 television commercial for the new Enclave minivan opens with a minivan cruising down a suburban street. A voice states that the new minivan has features like remote control sliding doors and a full sky view sunroof. As the minivan cruises along, the family of five is joyfully smiling inside. The minivan stops at an intersection and the camera zooms into the face of the young boy sitting in the back seat as he gazes out the window. And then, wham! A speeding car barrels into the intersection and smashes into the minivan. The minivan buckles and glass flies everywhere. Then the screen fades to black and a message reads, didn't see that coming? No one ever does. Buckle up. This wasn't a car commercial. It was a safety commercial by the US Department of Transportation. 
The commercial caught the attention of millions of people when it aired in 2001, and it effectively delivered a safety message that most people found boring and were sick of hearing about. The Enclave minivan commercial was so effective because it was so unexpected. Nobody expects people to die in a car commercial. Before delivering your next idea, try to capture the attention of your audience by injecting a dose of unexpectedness into your message. I tried to inject a dose of unexpectedness at the beginning of this video when I asked you to think how often your friends would guess the song you're tapping, and I brought up numbers like 1 out of 10 times, or half the time, and then revealed the number was more like 1 out of 40. I was hoping that that number would be surprising and insightful. One great way to craft an unexpected message is to identify the topic of your idea, and then ask yourself, what is my audience expecting to hear about this topic? Then ask yourself, what would my audience find surprising or counterintuitive about this topic? When you ask these questions, you challenge the assumption that people will find your idea interesting just because you find it interesting. Take a moment to imagine someone knocking on your door. You open the door and you find a young lady wearing a red vest and carrying a bucket. She politely introduces herself and explains that she's working for Save the Children and she's trying to raise money for starving kids in Africa. Which of her two messages are you more likely to donate to? Food shortages in Mali are affecting more than 3 million children. Please help them. Or, any money that you donate will go to Rokia, a 7-year-old girl in Mali, Africa. Rokia is desperately poor, and she faces the threat of severe hunger and even starvation. Her life will be changed for the better as a result of your financial gift. In 2004, researchers at Carnegie Mellon University tested a similar scenario. The people who were given the startling statistics about Africa's food shortages contributed on average $1.14. But the people who heard the personal story, like the one about Rokia, contributed $2.38 on average, more than twice as much. The majority of the time you deliver a message, you're going to expect people to care about your message as much as you do, but they won't, unless you tell a personal story. Personal stories are like flight simulators for the human mind. A personal story can allow someone to imagine themselves in the shoes of the main character in the story and feel what they're feeling. This is why more people donated when they heard the story of Rokia. Those donators felt Rokia's pain and wanted to help. If you want people to listen and care about your ideas, start introducing your ideas using a personal story. All good stories involve a setting, a protagonist, personal struggle, and a logical sequence of events to overcome that struggle. Your goal is to make your idea the solution the protagonist uses to overcome the struggle. This protagonist could be you, someone you know, or someone you read about. In the end, to overcome the curse of knowledge and deliver messages that stick, remember to inject a bit of mystery, reveal an unexpected fact or event, and deliver your message with a personal story. That was the core message that I gathered from Made to Stick by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. This is one of the best books on effective communication I have ever read. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of the success checklist for sticky ideas that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a productive week.